In this video, you will learn how to create an Autodesk Education account, how to create a new component or an assembly, where to get support, how to set your user preferences, and how to change your display settings. So first, let's start off by talking how to get Autodesk Education software. So Autodesk, we make our software free for students and educators. And all you need to do is create an account at autodesk.com slash education. Just note that you must be 13 or older to create an account. So just two sites that I want you to be aware of. So the first one here, upper right-hand corner, autodesk.com slash education is where you're gonna to go to create your account. And then the second one is where to get help. So go to autodesk.com slash education slash support. On this page, we have many options for getting help. Just note, if you are a PLTW teacher, you can also refer to the PLTW Solutions Center. We also created a white paper that guides you through the process of creating an Autodesk Education account and how to install and set up Fusion 360. Type in the URL below or take a picture of the QR code. Now I wanna walk you through the process of creating an Autodesk Education account. On the Autodesk Education Community site, simply click on Get Products in the middle of the screen. On this page, if you already have an Autodesk Education account, click Sign In. If you need to create a brand new account, click on Get Started, and then you will be guided through the process. Now, if you need some additional help, click on the Support tab. On the Support page, we have videos that you can watch that will guide you through the process of creating your account, how to get products, and how to renew your access. Scrolling on down, we have some additional information about the Autodesk Education Plan. And below that, we have some additional resources that you can click through and also links to the Fusion 360 Forum. And if you have additional questions, down in the lower right-hand corner, click on Ask a Question. On this page, you can type in a question or you can create a support case or you can start a chat with an agent. So now I'm gonna switch over to Fusion 360. When you start Fusion 360, you'll notice here that I'm automatically inside of a part file. If you look in the browser, it's represented as a single cube. Again, telling me that I'm working in a component file. What I didn't have to do is declare up front, do I wanna work on a part or component file or work in an assembly? If you're going to be designing a single component, all you need to do is just start modeling like you normally would. Now, if I want to turn this into an assembly file, I have two different methods for doing this. If I want to create the components in the context of the assembly, go up to the Assemble menu and click on New Component, and then enter in the name here. So I'll just create a new component called Base. And you'll notice in the browser up at the very top, the icon has changed to three cubes, and that three cubes is now telling me that I'm working in the context of the assembly. Now all the features that you would be creating will be created in the context for this base component. The other method for creating an assembly, if I start up a brand new design, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this file. Notice that I'm currently in a part file. If I expand the data panel, and I wanna reference a file in either by right-clicking, insert into current design, or if you're on a Windows computer, you can also drag and drop. Now that the component is referenced in, you'll notice that I'm working in an assembly file. Next, let's talk about user preferences. So first I'm gonna close the data panel and I'm gonna go back to the original file that I was working on. One of the first things that you wanna confirm are the units that you're working in. One of the easiest ways to do this in the browser, expand on the document settings and click on the icon to edit the units. And in the dialog box, simply change this to whatever unit you want. So for example, inch. And here I have the option to also make it the default for future files. So go ahead and click OK. Another way to set this is under your initials, click on preferences. Here in the preference dialog box, you have many different options that you can set. One that I like to take a look at first is make sure that Z is pointing up. You'll see here in the view cube, my Z is already up, but again, for consistency, make sure your students probably have the exact same setting. Another option that you might wanna look at would be the reverse zoom direction. As you spin the wheel, 
Is it going to zoom in or zoom out? If you want to change the units, you can also do that under default units, design, and then change the units as desired. Note that the preferences follow you. So if you log into Fusion 360 on a different computer, they will be exactly as you set them here. Next, let's look at some additional options. I'm going to go back to the assembly file. One option that you may want to explore with your students is switching the viewports. So down at the bottom of the screen, I can turn on multiple viewports. So this is a great method to use when you're talking to your students about top, front, side, and an isometric view. And when you're done there, go back to a single viewport. The next option to the left is where you can turn your grid on and off and control the settings for that grid. So the next option that I want to look at is going to be visual styles. Visual styles is how is the model appearing on the screen? So here you can see mine is set to shade it with visible edges. So what would it look like with wireframe with visible edges only? So again, user preference, and you can always change these as needed. So I'm going to change mine back to shade it with visible edges. And another option that you may want to look at would be environment. So this is going to be the background color of Fusion 360. So for example, if I change it to blue, so go ahead and change the environment setting as you see fit. I'm going to change mine back to photo booth. So this concludes this getting started video. Thanks for watching.